Good. All right, questions for Coach? Have you decided if you're returning to the sideline this week, or is that just kind of a see-how-you-feel thing? Or day uh, day? Yeah, I got to go take a look at Vandy's box, maybe, see what, see what it's like. I mean, no, I thought it was good, you know. <laughs> I thought the communication was good you know, from the sideline, you know, on up. And um, I've done that before, but um, obviously last week was more of a, hey, get away from it a little bit. Just kind of just go call it, get away from some of the emotion and, and, and stress of it a little bit. And I thought it was good. Um, it was nice at times to be able to just kind of be away from it and just call the game and, and just kind of be away. So we'll see. We'll see. But, you know, kind of expect to go back up. Not, not really, you know, you had the uh, fumble going in, right? Then we had the uh, fumble over, you know, over our heads to start the one drive, which puts you at third and 22. Then you had the fumble over our heads again that we overcame to score. Um, you had the touchdown call back on the hold where we've got three guys blocking one guy and end up somehow getting a hold. Um, so you look at it and you say, well, probably left you know, a couple touchdowns out there a couple points and um you know but that's the reality of it that's where we're at there's no excuses for it and um hopefully you know today we started a good day of prep and you felt it from the guys amp up the execution the detail the focus and fundamentals and concentration to get this thing right so um it's not gonna happen overnight it's not gonna just happen and we all just want it to just happen um we all want touches. We all want carries. I want as many guys to be impacted by this game as possible. But on offensive football, it takes every single one executing in order for everybody to have success. You know, we have a wide open receiver on an out cut that he burns a kid on. We get beat up front. What, you know, whatever it is, right? That is always, that's offensive football. Defense, you can have like six guys make something, do something wrong and get a fumble and get off the field. It's just not the way it works on offense. And, uh, Hopefully we're starting to understand that. Liam, have you ever had a quarterback make a play like that? No, no, that was ridiculous. What do you say to him when he's he Oh, I'd love to just throw the hitch into the boundary that was, you know, kind of open for a first down, <laughs> you know. But uh, that's part of what makes him, you know, he's he's made some great plays like that, you know, on some third downs where he's got guys crawling at his feet and he's made plays and. Um, him and Ray have connected on a few of those kind of plays, honestly, in training camp. That wasn't the first time that they've – maybe that was the first time it was, like, that aggressively uh, ridiculous. But they've they've connected on some of those kind of weird checkdowns that they've just found each other. They have a good football feel. And uh, at the end of the day, those are just two guys making a play. And that is football, right? It's not always going to be perfect. It's not always going to be clean. Love to just take the free access throw into the boundary for the first down, but we didn't, and he made a play. And uh, I'm really pleased that we have him at quarterback. Liam, Devin obviously went right back to Jordan after the fumble. And yeah. Made a really good play, the yep. tough ending. But how did you make the way Jordan responded? And also just coming back from injury, you missed most of the training camp. Yeah, just haven't seen Jordan too much, right? It's like the first kind of getting him back in the swing. Like I have really have not seen a ton of Jordan Dingle, and I have a lot of respect for him and, and what he did last year. And the type of player that he's become. So I'm just anxious and, and, and eager to see him continue to build, keep getting better, uh, keep put, keep putting good stuff on tape, minimize some of the negatives and some of the MAs, and, and, and good things will happen. I'm, I'm proud of him. Yeah, there was a lot of talk this summer about Devin making the transition from the ACC to the SEC, mm -hmm. facing hard defenses. In your experience, what does that look like? Or, or is it a different Yeah. I mean, I think he's faced like – we were talking about that actually the other day about some of the defenses he's gone against. And you look at Clemson, you look at Florida State, you look at some of those teams. I mean, some good defenses, some good pass rushers, some good speed out there that he's gone up against, Miami, things like that, whatever. But I don't know if it's every week, right? In the SEC, it's every single week, week in and week out, you're going against the top tier pass rushers and some of the top secondaries in the country. And, um, that's something that we'll probably have to get used to a little bit more and it's just playing fast, executing, anticipating, you know, playing faster, but not in a hurry. Those are things that we've been talking about because that has shown up on some of the tape, on some of the throws to Dane the other day, right? Just, they're just not hitting, right? And I think it's just, things are sped up a little bit at times for the both of them. And we have to just settle in, calm down, execute. Like the interception we had the other day, that should have been routes on air. 
It's a 15 yard comeback, routes on air, one hitch timing, 15 yard route, turn your head around, catch ball. But it wasn't. Those have to become routine for us to take the next step. Obviously, I knew Ray Davis was super talented when he brought him in, but did you expect him to be as much as a threat in the passing game as he is? Yeah, this spring he actually showed some of that. You know, like maybe not as much coming into it, I, I guess you could say, but as we got around him and got used to him and got, got with him, you could see his, um, his skill set in the pass game as, as being efficient and effective that way. So uh, excited about building off that with him. Um, and, and he can, he's smart. He's just a smart football player. He's got a good feel. Um, you know, the first play of the game on the screen, he just had a really good feel to settle in that zone and catch the ball and get vertical. And, um, you know, pr proud of him, the way he's, you know, come back and continue to battle. But he's got a great feel for the game, which really helps you as a coach. How do you feel about the offensive line right now? Taking steps. You know, we're taking steps. I think um, from a pass pro perspective, I mean, we're throwing the ball more times than I'd probably like to because of some of our inefficiencies on first down. You know, right now we're like 50% efficient on first down, which is not where we want to be. And so that's putting us behind the chains and behind the sticks. And ultimately, on second and 20, like the other night, I threw a dagger cut to Dane on second and 20 because I have belief in those guys and making that play. It didn't happen, but we had a good clean pocket and good protection, and I trusted those guys on second and 20 to push the ball down the field. We're not throwing quick game as much or handing the ball off on second and 20. So I think from a pass pro perspective, we've improved. Um, now it's just about, hey, how can we get better in the run game, blocking movement, seeing things, being on the same page, communication. But um, I think from a pass pro perspective, it's improved. Liam, Coach Stoop said during his press conference that he thought one of the benefits of you being in the booth was that you could maybe sit there and collect your thoughts as well as maybe draw up some plays. Mm -hmm. Were there any of them that you ended up calling that maybe you wouldn't have been able to, to do if you'd been on the side? Um, you know, I'm trying to think anything specific. Um, I think just seeing it, honestly. Just seeing it and like seeing things play out. And then you can, as a coach, like see it a little bit quicker the next time it happens. Right, like when things happen on the field, it happens really fast and it happens from a different vantage point. So like, you might not totally see exactly what happened. You kind of have a feel, then you get confirmation up top, but it's not immediate. Whereas up top, you get to see it and it's like, okay, next time we run that, I'm seeing exactly how they're responding to, the, to that play. So there is benefits to being up top. There always has been. The only reason why I've ever really been down is more so from a leadership standpoint. And just to be around the guys, I like to feed off their their energy, and um, be there for them if I need to be. But there's no question, calling plays is easier up top. Do you think Brad, they handled Brad that Stevens. part of it? Say it again. Hold on. Do you think they handled that part of it? The players. Yeah, I, I thought the coaches did a great job on the sidelines in terms of the communication. We had the one issue on the on the second play of the game, um, from a personnel standpoint. But other than that, there was no issues. I thought the the players responded well. I mean, these kids are. They're, they're tough, you know, like they're not worried about me as much, you know, they just want to go compete and go play. And at the end of the day, as long as I'm calling plays for them and they're all executing, I think they're pretty happy and, um, you know, they're resilient. So they were good on the sidelines. They were great from a communication standpoint. I got Devin on the phone, got Barry on the phone, got Dan on the phone. It was good from that communication standpoint. Lonnie, last one. Yeah, Anthony Brown Stevens, he got open. Yeah. And uh, some of it. Some of the other guys have been able to do. Mm. Is there something you saw with him, him being able to do and maybe go he's, back to that again? He's done that consistently since he's got here. You know, he's gotten open. He's a really, really good route runner. I think the guys in that room have a lot of respect for AB in terms of his route running ability, his attention to detail. Um, he's arguably one of the best ones in terms of that stuff and takes a lot of pride in route running and detail and trying to be on the screws. And, um, you know, he, I was bummed for him. You know, I was bummed for him because that was a big time play in the game. And he converted his route because it was a cloud corner. He ends up in the right spot. Devin sees him, extends the play and makes a good throw and catch. And we got three guys blocking one and get a hold. So it's kind of crazy. But, you know, it was uh, it, it, he'll continue to keep getting better and, and, and get his opportunities. Okay, folks, thank you very much.